Hello everyone. Hello everybody. Uh, this past weekend was the Bakersroom Musical Festival, Classical Musical Festival. Music festival. Mm, they just talk about the music, music festival, festival, but it's mainly classical. It's not heavy classical music, but classical instruments, classical musicians that was classically trained. I and think. a little bit of jazz. And a bit of jazz, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and then uh, there were some uh, artists, painters, and we did the pottery and the sculpting. So that was uh, part of the music festival as well. Always a lovely experience, the collaboration between the different art forms. Not so yeah. much collaboration, but it's this setting where you experience this, and these. We it works so well. Mm. I don't think it's, it's not even planned so much because it, it, the weekend is actually all about the music. Mm. So, but for us uh, and for artists generally, I think it's a good opportunity to showcase our work. Um, there's a lot of people coming from all over the country, people that appreciate the arts, appreciate music. So it's just a, a good opportunity. So we're always looking for a, a good space to have our pop-up gallery. And we had a marvelous place this time. I think George must put a photo or two on the blog so you can just mm. see how beautifully it came. It was very rustic, but it was just perfect. Mm. So we were so inspired by the space and, and everybody else as well coming yeah. in there. And uh, uh, that's another art form, architecture, mm. coming in and creating a space where things could take place. Mm. It was really special. And it was very uh, nice to experience musicians coming into the exhibition. Yes and appreciating the pieces yeah and then this conversation between us as uh sculptors as visual artists, yes please. yeah and and them as musicians yeah. and yeah. yeah no it was really and and such interesting people uh people that we've met before new people um it was just such a rich rich weekend and to a degree, the practical situation in terms of also the political situation mm. over the weekend, to an extent, highlighted some of the aspects that came to the fore uh, at the music festival. Explain a bit. On Monday, there was this fear, was it Monday or Tuesday? Monday. Monday. On Monday, there was this fear of the shutdown by the EFF uh, and a lot of people were nervous in terms of traveling mm. to the venue and so on. So this music festival with all this art takes place against the backdrop and everybody's saying we were so fortunate that we didn't have load shedding. Yeah, or very little load shedding. Very little load shedding. Yeah. So. The Dutch Reformed Church, the biggest venue in Wackerstrom where the gala evenings are held, fortunately they had a big generator. Mm. So that helped. So all this takes place against the backdrop of a very... Um, Almost a dysfunctional... Um, yeah, a, a, um, a lot of turmoil. A lot of turmoil. A lot of turmoil and a lot of difficult practical situations mm. if, if we take how difficult it was to fire the kiln. Yes, yes, I mean beforehand. And, and for the sound people um, during the music festival, they didn't know whether there would be load shedding or not. So yes. they had to prepare for load shedding. So and that put a lot of extra strain and extra effort yeah. um, on them. So one can look at this practical situation and the political situation um, and one can say in times like that, isn't it too much of a luxury to have such an experience? Mm. I mean, isn't it a little bit of putting your 
head in the sand and say, oh, this is wonderful, we enjoy it, while the country around us is actually not in a very good shape. Mm. No, because I think generally the feeling is that art is not necessary for life. Mm. Mm. Um, and that's always been a, a big challenge for us. I think in, in earlier times it was different. If you look at the big artists like Michelangelo and all of those, they had patrons that allowed them to to just create while their needs, their, their physical needs were catered for. Mm. Maybe not lavishly, but they, they didn't need to worry about um, making a living. They were just creating. They were just using their talent to create beauty. Mm. But um, maybe uh, one has to... Be realistic and say maybe that type of artists weren't that many as well uh, I don't know whether uh, where when you when you were an artist um, whether you had a patron uh, no and I don't think so but I think also it was it was um, appreciated and respected as something truly important mm. if you mm. look at the churches the cathedrals mm. the, all mm. those places with that incredible art all of that was done because it was commissioned it was um it was really important it was preserved uh, even in times of war they went to to such efforts to save the the art pieces and to take it to to safer places it was really important mm. I think we've lost a lot of that mm. generally um, and it's not just visual arts mm. I think you're right we often think oh, you know why would you do something like that there's such a lot of other important things mm. Mm. so but then we read this beautiful quote by um, Howard, Howard Thurman. Thurman and I think we can maybe yeah change everybody's mind about this <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's try <laughs> howard thurman the american theologian and author he said there must be always remaining in every life some place for the singing of angels some place for that which in itself is breathless and beautiful Oh, especially in trying times one can get bogged down in what is practical what is uh, functional and also just in the negative yes and in the yeah in the in the stress of all of this and I think um, for me with pottery and specifically sculpting um, in the times when it was when I went through my darkest times that was um, the way that that I got through it mm. was by creating by creating art by giving expression to what was going on inside of me mm. Mm. Um, so people viewing those pieces of yours were witnessing an inner process that took place. Yeah, and and and, uh, and and I think that's what make artists really special is that they actually create beauty from even difficult situations, from yes. difficult things in their lives. If you look at the poets. Yeah. Um, it can be heartbreak. It can be war. It can be uh, the the death of a child, and they write these beautiful poetry mm. um, about those terrible terribly hard times mm. in your life it's so beautiful i think it was Bertolt brecht who said should we be singing in hard times yes we should be singing about the hard times yeah um so it's also a way of processing the the the, the circumstances under which we live and view it from different perspectives and and helping people to view it in in a different perspective mm. and that was the experience over the weekend because it was from the Friday until Tuesday and it was just as if people said there is still beauty mm. 
Mm. It was a wonderful atmosphere of almost of optimism, mm. of of um, enthusiasm. Because I think it's also a discovery that even difficult times can't suppress the creative spirit. No, no. And beauty makes things bearable. Yeah. I was talking to somebody over the weekend who is going through a very difficult time. And I said, even if you can get one thing of beauty a day, it can be a simple thing. It can be an autumn leaf. It can be just notice one beautiful thing mm. it, it, it's just so uplifting it's just so hopeful um it changes how you look at life mm. Mm. otherwise we just become so bogged down like you say like it, all you can see is the negative all you can see mm. is the problems if you if if you and and i think gratitude journals work the, in the same way but um just to be open to beauty mm. Mm. Even when it's going difficult, and maybe especially when it's going yes, difficult. Yes, yes, yes. Just one thing around the whole issue of art and appreciating art, experiencing art and so on. One got the impression out of some quarters that people shied away from attending some of the performances mm. because they felt they didn't they they weren't knowledgeable enough yeah or it's it's not their genre they so they um yeah like you said that maybe they will not enjoy it because they will not understand it mm. i myself really struggle with 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 serious jazz mm. where, where it resonates so strongly with you i really struggle with it mm. but i can sit there and i can really appreciate the technical absolute genius mm. of what's happening there mm. Mm. even though the music doesn't sort of um move me like it moves you mm. Mm. um and i think i was i was telling everybody just try it you'll be so amazed um somebody told us that she took a little girl she said are you sure you want to go listen to the piano and the violin mm. for an hour mm. Mm. and they said yeah they want to go how old were they they were um sort of low low um primary school say sure. nine ten years old mm. eight ten years old thereabouts mm. and she said they sat quietly throughout that hour of that music and enjoyed it and enjoyed it it was marvelous for them mm. so we can never say you know it touches again it's those things that touches on a subliminal level yes that, that unconscious no you don't even know what's happening but it touches you and it changes you and it and it uplifts you and not to be afraid to have those experiences but to expose yourself and to be open to be touched yeah, um, yeah. so Just you read, will you read that again before we close mm. I... there must be always remaining in every life some place for the singing of angels some place for that which in itself is breathless and beautiful mm. and i know how i can be so breathless at all just so teary-eyed in front of art that just moves me so deeply mm. i don't even mm. have an emotion i'm just crying mm. um mm. And, and it's wonderful also to see that in mm. people. Um, I had the pottery wheel there mm. and it was so lovely. I'll just quickly tell you, the last day we were almost ready to close the doors and I was finishing off some things that I was, uh, has been making and I looked up and there was this little group of, of boys standing outside the window and I invited them in, little um, Zulu boys. And... Um, Oh, they were absolutely amazed by what was happening on that wheel. Mm. Um, they were just, and then I gave them each a piece of clay just so they can just feel the texture. But it was tiny little pieces. Mm. And off they went and I thought, oh, well, you know, there they go. They're going, going to play. And when I looked out the window a little bit later, they were sitting on the pavement. And because it was so little clay, they just put it together and they made one piece. Mm. 
And I was so touched by that. It was so beautiful. Mm. Um, the way that they, that they, what they did with it and, mm. and how proud they were when they came and showed me the little car mm. with a little trailer that they made. Mm. Oh, it was so precious. It was so beautiful. It's a moment that I will never forget. Yeah. And that childlike enthusiasm, mm. which is actually at the heart of creativity. Yes. Yeah. That was so beautiful. I hope and we hope that you uh, create space in your daily living to find beauty, something like the singing of angels or something that leaves you breathless. Mm. Be on the lookout for that. And tell us about it. Yes. Keep well. Goodbye, everyone.